People pay a lot of money for store-bought honey-baked hams to enjoy during the holidays like Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. But I have a newsflash for you guys. It is shockingly easy to make your own copycat honey-baked ham at home. All you have to do is thaw a pre-cooked ham from the store, slather it in a sticky sweet honey glaze, and then pop it in the oven until the inside of the ham is warmed through and the outside has this gorgeously glossy and caramelized crust. I promise you that once you make this honey baked ham recipe at home, you will never buy it from the store again. So let me show you how to make it. When you buy a ham from the store, it'll look a little something like this, usually wrapped in foil and plastic. The most important thing is to thaw your ham in the fridge for one to two days and then bring it to room temperature for about two hours before cooking, just as you do with a turkey. Now keep in mind that the ham is pre-cooked, which is what you want, and it'll often come with a little packet of glaze. But since we're adding a glaze that tastes much better and without processed ingredients, you can just chuck that packaged one into the trash. Continue cutting the plastic off of the ham, and I think it's kind of funny that mine is all wrapped in gold foil. It reminds me of the golden ticket from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I'll take that as a positive indication that this is a winning ham. Well, I should say that I know it's a winning ham because I've already eaten up all of the leftovers after this video. Now, when you're at the market, you have a few options when it comes to buying ham. You can buy regular or spiral cut and boneless versus bone in. I recommend you buy bone in as it's extra juicy and the bone will go from the middle of the ham through to the top. And the spiral cut means that all of the carving work is already done for you and it's super easy to serve up. You can see how it's individually sliced here and that's always a bonus during busy holidays. To bake the ham, you'll need a roasting pan and I'm actually gonna ditch the roasting tray that's normally in mine as it's sloped on the sides. So I'll replace that with a simple flat roasting rack as we'll cook the ham flat side down. So place the rack in the roasting pan and then add the ham, which should be about eight to 10 pounds on top. There's one big reason you want the ham slightly elevated and that's because you're gonna add two cups of water. This keeps the ham nice and moist while cooking and it prevents the glaze from burning on the bottom of the pan without the need for extra aluminum foil, which is always a bonus. All right, let's make the honey glaze by adding one cup of coconut sugar to a bowl along with two thirds cup of honey. And I just love that the coconut sugar imparts a slightly caramel flavor to the honey glaze. To that, add one third cup of fresh orange juice from one orange, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard for a subtle spice. And then for more spice and flavor, add half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. Whisk that all together so there's no lumps and that it's fairly smooth. Often recipes will have you simmering the glaze on the stove for a few minutes to allow the sugar to dissolve, but honestly, I don't think it's really necessary. And I'm all for cutting out unnecessary steps and extra dirty dishes. So once you've got your glaze ready, brush about a quarter of it all over the ham very generously. You'll have plenty of glaze for this recipe, so don't worry about running out. Cover your glazed ham with aluminum foil as this will lock in the moisture and prevent the ham from drying out. And I think we can all agree that a moist and juicy ham is far more delicious than one that's dried out. You may need two separate pieces of aluminum foil to fully cover your ham, or you can buy the extra wide foil, which is what I'm using today. Then pop that in an oven that you've preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and cook it for about 90 minutes for an eight to 10 pound ham. And don't forget that I've always got more details and a printable recipe card on the full recipe blog post page, which is linked in the video description. Now, even though this ham will cook for about 90 minutes, you're gonna wanna reglaze it at 30 minute intervals. So that's why I set my timer for 30 minutes and then I'll take the ham out because it's just easier to add more glaze when it's up on my stove and I'm less likely to accidentally spill glaze on the inside of my oven if I try to do it while it's still in the oven. So just peel the aluminum foil back and add another one quarter of the glaze all over the ham, making sure to get the glaze in all those nooks and crannies. Then place the ham back in the oven and continue cooking it, or I should say warming it through as it's already cooked. And just remember to add more glaze at 60 minutes and 90 minutes. 
I won't show you all of the different intervals because it's just more of the same, but at 90 minutes, take your ham out of the oven and then crank up the heat to 425 degrees Fahrenheit to caramelize the outside of the ham. Remove the foil completely as you don't need it anymore. And if you'd like to double check the temperature, it should be about 110 degrees Fahrenheit at this stage with the ham fully done at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which it will be after another 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. So thoroughly coat the ham in the last bit of glaze and place it back in the oven uncovered for 15 to 20 minutes. Depending on how your oven cooks, you could also turn on the top broiler to get it extra crispy. Just be careful not to burn it if you do go that route. When your honey glazed ham is done, it will look beautifully golden on the outside with a gorgeously shiny, slightly caramelized glaze, and your kitchen will smell all sorts of amazing from the sweet honey and spices. Just look at all those beautiful pools of glaze on certain layers of the ham. Those are always my favorite pieces to snag because let's be honest, it's the outside edge that everyone loves. Let the ham cool for a few minutes and then remove it from the pan to a serving platter. I probably should have let this cool for a few minutes longer because it's getting a little toasty on my fingers, but when you serve it up, place the ham on its side and the spiral cut ham slices will just fan out beautifully. When you're serving up the ham, all you have to do is cut around the bone in the middle and then plate up the slices. Because the ham was already spiral sliced, it makes serving it up a breeze. But for an example of what not to do, <laughs> it's slicing off all of the sweet honey glazed edges like this. I know this is not the right way to cut the ham, but as I'm the only one eating this ham, I get to enjoy the best parts first. And believe me when I say this honey glazed ham is knock your socks off delicious. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends, especially for a little holiday inspiration, and I will see you again in the next video.